Nick, you're looking very comfortable. You're looking very excited. <laughs> you make me comfortable. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a great start, isn't it? You must be so excited about the prospect of making your full-time race and debut in Formula One this year. I know it's been a long wait, but you must be so excited. Yes, yeah, certainly. The, the lead-up has been very long. Um, obviously, I kind of knew that I would be in Formula One in 23, uh, around October, end of September. End of September? Yeah, I probably had a good feeling, beginning of October. And uh, ever since, I've been kind of living uh, towards this moment. So we're here launching our car in New York, which is a, a very important kind of milestone in our preparation. Uh, it's a big thing. And then, uh, then we get to kind of the real business and we go out, test our car and, and start racing. And um, I can really not wait. The, the wait has almost been too long. The winter in itself was short because I think I had 10 days off and, and spent uh, seven ill. But um, I feel like I'm, I'm ready for it now. Oh, wow. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. At least you got yeah. the illness out of the way. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's a bit, I mean, it's very ironic, right? You, you stop, you relax, and then your body stops fighting, and, and yeah, then you get ill. Everyone needs a break, I guess, at some stage. Yes, true, true. You mentioned New York, an epic location for a car launch. What do you make of it? Yeah, it's a very unique combination to uh, be launching our car ahead of the new season in collaboration with the New York Fashion Show. Um, Formula One has grown in the US uh, a lot the past, past years. We are going to race three times uh, in the US. And obviously Alpha Tauri as a fashion brand is uh, just launching a new collection, selling in the US. So I think that whole kind of combination is very unique and special and makes it even uh, cooler to be yeah, organizing our launch here. Now, looking at that winter that you just mentioned and being a little bit ill, aside from that, looking from social media, it looked like you had a great time, it looked like you trained hard Heavy as time. well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looked like you're ready to go. Because um, I know we all saw you getting out of the car when you had that experience at Williams, slightly unfair because obviously you just got dropped straight into it. But you've worked so hard by the looks of it over the winter to get in shape. Yeah, I think I, uh, I could almost joke and say that um, I'd be ready to, to lift the car instead of you know struggling to get in or struggling struggling rather than struggling to get out. I would struggle to get in. Um, no, I only gained a couple of kilos, but um, I, I feel really ready. We put in a lot of work um, together with my new trainer Piri. Uh, I really trusted him on his philosophy and his approach. So uh, I kind of just followed uh, followed um, yeah his his program and um, together we, we pushed hard and, and we shared the pain together. So tough days we would always do together, uh, intervals or heavyweight days. And um, I feel like we're in, a, you know, we're in a good place. I feel strong and ready to yeah, start the season. Now at 28, that's pretty late for a, a driver in Formula One, generally speaking. You've got the maxes of the, the world kind of coming through very young, but you've got so much experience in other Are you saying I'm old? Well, I'm not saying you're old, I'm just saying you're older so yeah. than, no, uh, than the, max, uh, yeah. the maxes of this world, Charles, Georges. But you've got so much experience, that must really give you a lot of confidence that you're going to come in and be able to call on all of that in a way that a rookie these days wouldn't have that to call upon, would they? Yeah, I mean, everyone's path is different and everyone walks their own way. Uh, mine has been a bit longer, uh, but that gave me the opportunity to race in many different series and I think that has matured me but also developed me kind of broader as a, as a human and a driver. I've raced in, in single-seater racing, endurance racing, uh, in electric racing. So I've, I've been very fortunate to, to race in different uh, championships. Uh, last year was even more unique, getting the opportunity through Mercedes to, to drive for many different um, teams and get a look into their kind of structure and, and how, they, how they operate. So, I think uh, in that perspective, I'm, I'm quite well uh, prepared and experienced, which will probably help me, um, help me in my kind of start in Formula One as well. But equally, I haven't actually driven Formula One cars that much. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but I'm sure I'll catch up quickly and, and um, yeah, we'll be good to go. It's tough these days for a rookie coming into Formula One because you just don't get the testing mileage that you used to, say, 10, 15 years ago. You have 150 laps, I think, you got in Abu Dhabi last year in the postseason yeah. test. And I think Avatar running you in some old cars before testing as well. Correct. So we it's did. all useful, right? But it's not that much, is it, to get started? No, but it's equally it's the same for everybody. So it is the way it is. And uh, at the same time, I've, I've you know, raced for many years. And I think it helps that 
not only I have some racing experience and I've seen and experienced a lot, I've worked with many different you know, manufacturers and teams, but also I'm a bit older in terms of uh, age. So yeah, I feel like um, I'm probably you know, ready, as ready, as ready as I can be. And, and things, things come when, when they have to come. And uh, I think my chance and uh, turn is now. How much confidence do you take from how everything's really spiralled from that, that weekend in Monza that things have just really come together for you and now you've got that opportunity this year? Well, I feel like we've had that conversation. Like, I, I, I feel like we've been having this kind of chat. Um, don't, it's not, it's not a, an, an, um, it's not a, um, don't want to attack you, but it's just like, I feel like we've talked about it and it's been amazing. I'm super grateful that it helped me to kind of get that momentum and, and get the opportunity in Formula One. But we're living in 23, we're launching our car today and Bahrain is coming and we're ready to race. And that's what, you know, I've been dreaming and living for my whole life. So I'm just really eager and keen to, yeah, start racing. So what kind of goals have you set yourself for this year? I know a lot depends on the car, of course, and you don't know what kind of car you're going to get yet, but personal goals, what have you got for yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always part of this time of the year to talk about expectations, but uh, I think that's just a lot of kind of talking because uh, the, truth, the, the truth is that nobody really knows where they are standing. Of course, 23 will be a kind of evolution of 22, uh, but at the same time, no, no one has had the chance to test their new cars and see where they are relatively to the competition. So I've been speaking to quite a few, you know, people in, in the paddock or paddock in, in, in our world and everyone seemed to be super confident but it's all relative mm -hmm. so uh, we'll find out soon um, and I guess for us as a team we uh, we aim to be fighting consistently uh, for good points but how realistic that will be um, time will tell. You spent a fair bit of time I think with Helmut Marco during the period of time in which you did the deal and I guess over the next few years you'll, you'll do that as well. What kind of targets as he set what advice has he given you as you kind of go along this path with Red Bull um, well so far I've been receiving a very warm welcome from the whole Red Bull family uh, I had the pleasure to spend a bit of time in Austria um, meet the management and, and meet the kind of Red Bull um, yeah community um, and also at the team in Fayenza everyone has been you know super supportive and, and welcoming so so far, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, in terms of, again, expectations, it's, it's hard to really pinpoint specific targets, but as a team, we want to move forward. Avatari has had a, a tougher season in 22, and uh, I think over the winter, we already work closely together to try and address all the kind of gaps and potential areas where we can uh, improve and find, impro find, uh, find performance. And, I think that's you know part of my role and and probably value being a little bit more experienced to to kind of you know bring a bit of an outside um, view into the team and to uh, work closely together to yeah basically get ourselves back into uh, yeah the good points. What about spending time with Franz as well? He's renowned for brought, brought several drivers through Formula One. He's quite well known as being a sort of mentor. Have you? spend much time with him and what kind of words of wisdom has he given you ahead of this year? Um, yeah, I definitely. I've obviously spent time in Fayenza, not only with Franz, but very much with, you know, the, the, the engineers, the technical people, uh, my mechanics. So I've tried to basically really integrate within the whole team and, and um, yeah, community. And, and you know, Franz um, assured me that, you know, take your time, um, you, you, you'll be fine. Just give yourself the time to get up to speed and, and take the mileage and experience which you need early on in the season to kind of put all the, piece, the puzzle pieces together because it's easy to go out and, and almost push too hard too quickly. But I think it's in, important to get the mileage through testing and the beginning of the weekend to put it together when it, when it matters. How are you going to evolve the way that you operate now that you're a full-time Formula 1 driver? And I mean that in the sense that I think I'm right in saying you don't have a manager or you haven't had a manager in the past. You haven't, you tend to do stuff yourself, I guess. Formula 1, I guess the workload and the pressure increase a little bit. Will you change the way you approach things going forward? Um, yes, a little bit. Um, I think 
the workload is is changing, but I would say I, I wouldn't be busier than than I used to. But mm -hmm. but the kind of emphasis is just changing. So now it's all about Formula One and performance, and that's where I need to invest all my time into. And I think previously I was spending a lot of time on kind of managing my opportunities in career, kind of trying to steer it in the best possible direction to not give up on you know, my hope, my, 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 my dreams. And um, I think that's, that's really kind of a privilege for me to, to, to experience the kind of position to just be fully focused on, on racing and, and, and performance. So I started working together with uh, Guillaume Le Goff, which also looks after Pierre. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, during the time when we, you know, when we were talking uh, with Alpha Tauri, um, so it all kind of happened together. Uh, and I'm very, you know, happy. We we've known each other since probably 2012, okay. so a long time. Uh, actually, Pierre, Guillaume, and I m met each other together. We mm -hmm. worked together in in a simulator um, back when we were just getting into car racing. Okay. Uh, so we we have a good history and, and bonding together. And I just wanted people around me that I trusted and and I know, and equally not people, you know, very much on the front line that, you know are interested in, in exposing themselves. I just need people to, to help me on the background. You mentioned Pierre just then, Nick. You obviously know Max as well. How well do you know a lot of the other guys on the circuit and have they been quite forthcoming and kind of welcoming you, I guess, to the, to the fold? Yeah, it was really kind and good to feel everyone's support around the, the Monza weekend. Um, I think I've been pretty much growing up with 80% of the grid. Um, not always directly r raced against everyone, but at some point during my career, I, I, yeah, I came across uh, a lot of them. And that's why it almost feels, not meaning to be arrogant, but it almost feels like you know, um, I, I kind of belong between them because I've, I've known them for so many years and I've always raced against everyone. Um, yeah, you mentioned Max. We, we known each other since we were, you know, kids in karting in the Netherlands or in the Benelux. We never actually raced each other until Monza because I was a little bit older, and ironically, we, we line up next to each other on the grid. Um, so that's you know u unique and and nice to finally get that opportunity to be uh, to be where we all want to be and get the chance to um, yeah to do it. And just finally, I can't let you go without talking about Yuki. Like, he formed such a great relationship with Pierre. It already looks like you guys are getting on like house on fire. How excited are you to be working alongside him this, this year? Yeah, Yuki and I go also a little bit back. And in Formula 2, I, I kind of supported him because I, I, you know, he's an entertaining uh, young man and uh, a fast, very fast driver. So I'm looking forward to, to working together with him. It's certainly the time we'll spend together, we'll have fun. Uh, but when it comes to work, we uh, yeah we're serious too. So yeah, looking forward to uh, push the team forward together, and, and hopefully we've had a good winter and uh, can fight for those points. Great stuff, Nick. As always, it's been a pleasure. Good luck this year. Thank you very much.